Commander, after hearing so much about the Federation's sense of fairness and justice, I was surprised that you sided with the Illidians. In all honesty, I expected more, especially from someone like you. To be clear, I'm not on either side of this conflict. Our only interest is peace. On the Illidian's terms, apparently. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Illidians. Not seized. Reclaimed. And restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive. Before the Illidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. I'm curious why the Illidians haven't fought back. They have the ability to retake the mines anytime they want. Ability is one thing. Courage is another. The Illidians know any hostile action on their part will not end well. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Illidians might have in store. Or is that not true? Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state-of-the-art, but the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Cedron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. Soothing. Commander Rydak, I have to admit, I was surprised when you said the Illidians should control the dilithium trade. I was under the assumption the Federation was neutral, but maybe I was wrong. I can assure you, we aren't on anyone's side. We are, and will remain, completely neutral. You have my word. I hope that's true. For all of our sakes. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Calvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. 
And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. They've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. Why would they do that? I don't know. But that's what concerns me. Whatever they're hiding, it can't be good. How can we know? I'd better see what's happening. Do you think you can find out what they're hiding? I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Sorry, I don't mean to bother you, but I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured it might be useful if I offered another perspective. Of course. I have to say, I fully expected you to side with the Hotari. But obviously the Federation wants a steady supply of dilithium. Something only we can offer. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. Left to the Hotari, it would be nothing short of a disaster. We're not on either side. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution to this conflict. As is ours. Of course, the question is, at what price? A major solid, Arminta. Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you, Commander. I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? You sound skeptical. Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mines? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow, the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. Gravitational harmonics failing to resolve. 
Warp bubble stability degrading. Increase output to maximum. Increasing warp output to maximum. It's happening again. It is evident that presently, the Resolute cannot achieve warp propulsion. Since our diagnostics rule out any problems with our warp systems or anything about the ship, the problem appears to be the fabric of space itself. Space itself? You're saying something about this region of space prevents warp travel? Prevents it, or can't sustain it. However improbable, that appears to be the case. The storm didn't stop us from leaving space dock and traveling here. But could it still be causing this interference with warp travel? We must follow sound investigatory principles. Do not let an assumed conclusion drive your analysis. Sometimes we need a little inspired thinking, Mr. Chovak. Captain Solano is on his way back from the negotiations, and I want to have some answers for him when he gets here. Indeed. Given the facts at hand, we may be able to deploy subspace probes around the ship to construct a clear picture of the phenomenon. Around the ship. I'll prep a shuttle. setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. Westbrook, the Resolute systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Nah, Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder to be a political animal like you. This new first officer coming aboard. This is far enough. Transporting the first probe into position. Westbrook here. The first probe is deployed. Understood. We are reading it. We are about to replay the simulation. I just can't get a handle on her. Commander Rydek. She rejected my plan to use a deflector pulse against the storm surge. But, on the other, she did listen to my advice and use the whole polarity trick to get you through that excursion alive. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the new XO. I'm sure she's a fine officer, even if we don't see eye to eye. But, she didn't go through what the rest of us did. You know that. And it's hard to figure out why she'd be the one Solano chose instead of... well... One of us. I've heard some good things. You should at least give her a chance. I'll take that under advisement. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. Whoa. All right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there.
With two points of data, the Resolute and the Pro, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen, I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholok, sure. I appreciate the advice, Commander. I'll make sure I keep my options open. I don't need to tell you how to operate. You're already well on your way. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack-of-all departments like you could be Commander-in-Chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the enlisted ranks, too. You know, I'd be the best leader Starfleet ever had. Lower decks always have to fix all the problems Command causes. Maybe I'd just save everybody some steps. Well, don't forget about us little people when you're running things. Of course not. You gotta remember where you came from. Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. Launch. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. A beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. Why would they be doing this? We came here to help these people. And now we're getting hit by some warp-killing weapon? Now, look here. It's our current readings of the Ion Storm. These concentrations... They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam... They're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear. This is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. Coming to peace talks in a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. I don't know why the Hotari wanted us here, but it wasn't to negotiate. Clearly, peace is not their intention. Then what is? Why go through this charade? 
Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they change their minds between when they asked and when we got here. Sidron was very curious when we spoke outside the Queen's chamber. He wanted to know all about us, our ship, the Federation. He wasn't giving any answers. He was looking for them. Well, I'm sure you didn't tell him too much. I don't think the Illidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hatari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present, far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Illidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. I've received an urgent call from Hatari. The Queen's advisor, Tylus, has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. Sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is that something you could help us with? I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but I have to go. Tylus. Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. We have to help her. Send another shuttle. We're not maybe... doing anything yet. Not until we know more. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tyla suspects this came from the mines on Tau. Hmm. It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the residue. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Olivians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith, which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. 
But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Otherwise, it could put us in a difficult position. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption and targeting the Resolute. We may have a better understanding once we analyze the device. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this warp problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. Will do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly. And I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to. Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ7 interlock? From the toolbox. I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it. I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. Here, I'll help. <laughs> We've got this. Thanks for the hand. We have to get these isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, what can I say? I'm good at what I do. I can see that. Come on, start pulling chips. substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there?
Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9, orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Retrieve a containment module. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. Some kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on! I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. But I overheard talk about the warp disruption on the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could trigger a distress call, get Starfleet to send more ships, or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat-tested vessels. Miranda, you gotta be more careful. If someone hears that, they could think you're talking mutiny. I'm just trying to figure out how we can help. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Mm. Almost forgot. You can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. Like she might have changed her mind. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us. Or it's because this is all happening so fast. But she usually doesn't scare easy. Well, of course she's taking it seriously, but that's her job. If she's on duty, she's got to be on the lookout for danger. Yeah, but talking about sending a distress call on her own... That's going too far. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now, we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda too. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze.
99.2% match. Got it. So, what are we looking at? The design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Khan Empire. Their civilization collapsed over 600,000 years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Takan were once the most advanced, most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. We don't have the first idea what this is or what it means. And we have all of the Federation records available to us. Perhaps we should see what else the Federation records show. Computer, what is the last recorded discovery of other Takan artifacts? On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardus. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating their release with an entity known as Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. There appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M class planet, a barren rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years ago. Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 63, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 63 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field, after Commander William T. Riker of the Away Team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. As I have said, they were the most advanced civilization in the galaxy. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, to see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. There's only one way to find out. We need to see what's down there for ourselves. I might be able to help with that. We've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. 
Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> Commander Rydex right. We need to know what's down there, what the Hotari are hiding, to better understand what we're up against, and to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces. Which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'm ready for action, Captain. Just say the word and I'll be there. I'll admit, I wish I could go myself. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. You can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. Yes, sir. I'll do everything in my power to make sure no one knows I'm there. Good. Of course, you'll have full support from the Resolute. And we'll make sure we take every precaution. Every precaution? Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. The Olydians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Petty officers Diaz and Ed Salar, where is the crystal formation that you found in the shuttle? I have tasked Ensign Calloway with performing a full analysis of the tetrametric pulses. Security brought it to the containment lab. I was just there. They don't know anything about it. Security never checked it in. Miranda never got there? She's the one that had the crystal formation? Yeah. Her and the rest of the security detail from the negotiations. Diaz, Tamaris. Carter Diaz to Miranda Maris. Commander Westbrook to Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Respond. Something's not right. She's still on the ship. She has to be. Computer, locate Petty Officer Miranda Maris. Petty Officer Miranda Maris is in the isolinear storage array on Deck 5. I'll go find her. Good. I am sure Mr. Diaz can attend to this on his own. 